Hi everybody, Cheaply Chic, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. So today I'm going to do a little bit of a tutorial video. I've had a couple requests now from a few of you here on my channel concerning sewing, not having a sewing machine or no experience with sewing and how you could still get a stitched look on your page. So I'm going to share something that I used to do in my scrapbooking days back before I got a sewing machine out and added things to paper. And hopefully it can be a help to you and that you might find it a little fun too. I'm sure that a lot of you already know how to do this sort of thing, but for those of you who don't, I hope that you enjoy All this. right, so getting started in the journal, I'm going to start with using maybe a fiber or two that came in this month's grateful collection for those of you who have this collection and specifically asked how we could do something like this. So I have not done a thing in this journal yet. This is the first video. And I was thinking when I looked at my October journal, I had added some paint to this dictionary page. And this is a music page. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do the same thing because I'm using these journals together through the month of November, which today is November 1st, by the way, it's time to get started. <laughs> so that's why I'm working on this today. I think I really like this edge and I'm going to do some stitching on the edge of this book before I get started doing any painting or anything. So I'm just going to use this piece of plastic here. This is literally just torn off of an old planner and it's just something thick to protect the rest of my book. I have also used some plastic cookie cutter type mats that I've picked up at the Dollar Tree or any kind of cutting mat that you have is great. I'm just um, wanting something small. A few things that you might find helpful, you may prefer to punch holes in your paper before you stitch. Some people may like to just use the needle and poke through as they go. And maybe you want to use an X-Acto knife. I'll tell you what I used to do back in the day. This is the old Memory Keepers hole punch setter, a brad setter. And you would use this. I think they have a different one nowadays. I don't think they sell this one anymore. I will look on Amazon, but I think I've looked before and I think they discontinued this specific punch. But I will look and find out and leave information about that in the description box down below. But you just want something that is going to punch a hole for you. It can be a punch itself. It can just be a blade, or you can just use a pen of some kind to mark where you want your stitches to be. Super simple. I guess for this video, I probably shouldn't use that since I don't know if that's even available anymore. And yeah somebody might feel like they want that. So I will go about it differently. You also, if you're really picky and you want your stitches even, you may want to use a straight edge, which I will do in this, on this page, just so we can have an idea. And I'm going to space mine every half of an inch apart. And I am going to poke holes with this. This is my little awl that I picked up at the, um, out of the sewing notion section at Joann's. There are awls, try saying are awls <laughs> 10 times. A-W-L, is that how you spell it? Probably not because <laughs> I'm not very good at spelling. But anyway, there are some of these at Hobby Lobby. They are not where you would expect them. They are actually in the leather working section, which is over by the beading and things like Just that. Just to give you a heads up if you're interested in one of these, I love binding my books with these, or if you just have an X-Acto or even a needle, it's fine. So I'm just going to start about half of an inch up off my page. I'm actually going to make sure that I come in quite a bit, maybe even poke into the page because I don't want to rip my paper later. I have done that a few times where I've gotten too close to the edge. And here you can see that I've created just a little hole and I'm just going to do that. And here I'm using this craft mat. Any craft mat works really. You just don't want to poke your desk or whatever you're working on. And actually this surface probably works a little bit better. And you know, this is junk journaling, so you do not have to feel like you have to get a straight stitching line at all. In fact, most of the time 
I prefer having a little bit of a crooked stitch because that's just really cute and fun and let's be honest it requires a lot less precision and sometimes that's nice the freedom to just have fun with it and not feel like you have to get something exactly right okay so I have made half inch holes all the way up my page and this time I'm just going to take there are some thinner red threads that are already provided in the kit and I'm going to use this big needle. These needles, I can't really remember a specific name. They might be upholstery needles. Somebody <laughs> feel free to comment down below what type of needle this is. Literally what I do is I go stand in this aisle that has all the needles and look for the biggest ones and there's a package of them and they vary in size and they vary in size with the holes. I don't necessarily use the biggest hole because it tends to pull the paper, you know, and make it a little bigger than it needs to be. I enjoy the one that's kind of in the middle, but any of them work. If you can get the thread through the hole, awesome. Okay, so now I've threaded my needle just like you would thread any old needle. I'm actually going to add a knot here to the bottom of my thread. And this is basic, basic stuff here. I'm actually going to double knot it so that that knots a little bigger and then you can decide where you would like your knots to show. I like the knots so I'm actually going to have that facing up so I'm going to go down through my paper first and because these holes are here I don't have to worry about ripping my paper. I also can make bigger stitches or smaller stitches depending on the look I want. And what I do enjoy about this compared to a machine stitch is the fact that you can tell it's hand stitched. And there's something about hand stitching that I think is really cool looking on some paper projects. So if you don't have this kit and you don't have the threads that came in the collection, you can use embroidery thread. You can use any kind of twine. Twine would be really cool in your autumn journal. You can use knit crochet, which I actually think this red is knit crochet. So it's a little bit thicker than just using a regular thread, which you could do as well. I just really enjoy the look of the thicker thread here since we don't have super tiny stitches from a machine that are super close together. Okay, so now because of the number of holes that I have, oh, it actually worked out for me. I was wondering if the knots were going to end up being on the same side of the page or not, or if one was going to be on the other side, which would be fine either way, but I actually got lucky and both of my knots are on the same side. Of course, if you really cared and you wanted them on the same side, you would just count out your holes and know where you were stitching up and where you were stitching down. Okay, so I double knotted that, and I'm just going to cut my string, and there you go. That is one stitched line, and you could put this on any page of your book. Okay, so now that we've done a basic stitch, let's go to the other side of that page, which is here, and it's going to make me work upside down. And the lefty, so I know that that might bother some of you for following along, but hopefully not. I'm going to work on my page upside down so that I can have my ruler on the right side for me. This would actually be the right side for you, right? I'm going to do the same thing I did over there, and I'm going to make X's this time. But I'm going to start by taking my tool, and at every half an inch, make sure I'm in enough poking a hole. I do really like poking my hole first because then I don't have to depend on my needle and I'm not risking ripping my paper so much if that makes sense by pulling it back and forth.
Okay, so now that we have that, I'm actually just going to move the ruler toward the inside of the book. Maybe let's do about a half an inch. I'm just gonna eyeball it, but I'm going for about half an inch. That looks good. And I want to try to make these dots exactly across. So I'm going to add my ruler down here and use those same half an inch marks. And there, it's not straight. Of course, that's what happens because I tried to be precise about something. <laughs> and the whole thing I just said earlier about you don't need to be precise. You really don't. In fact, a messed up cross stitch look could be kind of fun too. Now I have two rows of those lines this time. And this one is in the words, so you can't see it that well, but they are directly across from one another. This time I'm going to take two pieces of that red thread. I'm going to string my needle exactly like I did last time. Add a knot to the end of my string. All right, and this time, let me zoom in a little bit. This time I'm going to work from that same corner just because it's what I'm comfortable with. And I'm going to come up diagonally, if I can find that other hole. There it is, in the middle of that O. I'm gonna come up through that stitch on that side. So I'm gonna make a zigzag pattern all the way up the page. Doing, try not to knot your thread. <laughs> Doing a real basic up and down stitch. And this is just how I do it. I'm sure that there are other videos out there that will share other ways. It's just what I've always done when I've done something like this. Okay, it's really hard to see the holes in the text. <laughs> That's all right. So just very careful not to rip our book page. a new hole. There. And then you can tell here that I just went the wrong direction because I wasn't paying attention. So I'm going to take that string back out. Okay, now I'm actually sitting at my desk, so it's getting real, people. <laughs> okay, so when I said to do a zigzag, let me clarify. I'm going up through this hole down through this hole and then back up through this hole. You want to skip this hole because that's where you're going to come back in the next go around. All right. Let me re-thread my needle. Okay, now I'm going to come up the right hole this time and back down through this hole. Okay, because my string is out of this kit, I've actually only got a little bit of a tail left, so I'm going to switch and use my other string. If you were using a long piece of string that you cut yourself, there's no reason to um, not keep going. You don't have to cut your thread to make it just like mine. You're just gonna start going in the other direction. But because I'm using what is available to me, and starting fresh. And I'm in a funky position here. Okay, that knot's big, but that's okay. So 
if I'm going to pretend that I am using the same string like you might be, this time I'm gonna come back up directly across. I just went down this side and now I'm going to come back up right next to it here. So yeah, now we're going to go back down the opposite direction and that's going to give us a little bit of a cross stitch pattern. I'm going to come up here all those empty holes if we did it right and you weren't like me. <laughs> Oops. All right, I'm going to take a break with that because I'm causing myself a little stress with this extra thread. So I'm just going to knot this. Why is it when you get on camera and you want to start showing something, it um, <laughs> gets difficult? Okay. And of course, I'm breathing right over the phone. That's probably very pleasant to listen to. <laughs> okay, I'm going to trim that short so it quits getting in my way. Back over here and re-thread my needle. All right, so back to what I was doing. Now I'm going to come up through this hole here. back down. Oh my gosh. This is my life, people. It really is. I swear everything takes me twice as long as it takes everybody else. I don't know why. One more time. Yeah, right. So I am just stitching up and down again and creating a cross crisscross pattern here. And look at that, you guys. I imprinted pokey holes in the opposite side of my book anyway. Maybe I should have used a thicker craft mat. Learn from my mistakes. And use a thicker craft mat, I guess. Okay, and then this time, it ended on this side, so I'm just going to add another double knot here. And I'm just going to trim this. Okay, so that is a little crisscross pattern that we can add to the side of our pages and it gives it a nice look. Again, it doesn't matter if you're using two pieces of thread or if you're using one piece of thread because here you would just come across and go back up the other direction. And again, this is something you could add to anything, an envelope, a tag, if you have this collection, I was thinking it would be a lot of fun to add some stitching to this little leaf, which I might do later because I keep thinking about that. And I used that thinner thing, which I said would work well, and it did. It left an impression though. It might have actually poked a few holes on my other book page. So if you don't want that, make sure you're using something thicker than I did. And then just for something different, let's make a pocket out of something. Now you could, I've done it before where I've sealed these double pages here to make like a secret pocket to put something behind that maybe somebody else wouldn't pull out later. If you want to keep it a little more private. Um, my friend Crystal from Happy to Plan has taken pages actual pages and glued them together to make a pocket, which I think is an awesome idea. I have in other videos folded down a page and done that very thing that she showed how she does. I am going to take a piece of this wallpaper, adhere it to my page and make a pocket out of it. So I am going to make my pocket about three inches tall and three, let's see three and a half inches wide. So depending on what section I want here of my wallpaper from my pocket, and if it's even cut straight to begin with, because I cut these by hand, so be aware of that. I'm just gonna trim this to make a straight edge. And then I'm gonna make it three inches tall.
and I want this flower in the center, so I'm going to cut that edge off, and then I'm going to make this three and a half inches. So that's going to be my pocket, and I can still use these even though I cut them. These are would be awesome using a punch on them or cutting out circles. I have to decide where I want this pocket to be. I do like it with that brown craft paper, but I think I like it with this yellow paper here. Okay, so I'm just going to use my corner punch, and this is my corner punch, and I will link it down below. I will leave a link for it down below for anyone who might be interested. I've had that thing forever, and it's pretty heavy duty. But I just want to round the corners, just kind of give it a little bit of a different look from the bottom portion of my pocket. I'm also going to take my vintage photo and just kind of give these edges a little bit of color because I like the way that that makes it pop off the page a little bit and then it doesn't get lost in the paper behind it. Plus it also evens up any uneven cuttings. I always like that. Okay, so now I'm not going to use a wet glue this time because I just want to keep it in place while I stitch. I'm going to add a little bit of a tape runner glue at the bottom, center my pocket, and just kind of stick it down where I want it to be. This time I'm still going to use my fibers from the collection. Let's see, I really like that burlap looking string there, but I'm drawn to the screen. I really enjoy the avocado green. <laughs> So I think I'm going to use that this time. And because I learned my lesson about my craft mat that I decided to try, I'm going to use a real craft mat this time. And if you don't have a small one, you could bend your book back. I've done this to feed it through the sewing machine before. You might get some folds in your book, but if you have a craft mat on your desk, you can totally just fold it back and work that way too. I'm going to do the same thing. This time I'm not going to use a ruler because I don't, unless you're trying to be precise, I don't think it's really that necessary. And I'm just going to make ugh, some holes here along the edge. Now you could get messy with it. You could make something zigzaggy. I'm just going to go straight. Again, not really caring too much on how proportionate my stitches are. There, just want to make sure I got those. Now this time I'm going to count because I would like for my knots to be on this side of the pocket. So I'm going to count my holes and make sure that it's going to come back up at the right side over here. Okay, I got lucky and it's gonna come back up here. I guess if you want to pay attention to that ahead of time, it might be a little important to you. I um, forgot to double check and I don't always get lucky, but if I wasn't, if I messed up, I would just add another hole and not care about the spacing of my stitches so much. Okay, so I'm going to double knot this fiber again. You can see here, I'm just gonna stitch through this page. I like that. I like the thickness of this fiber. It's going to add a fun look. And because I'm going through the wallpaper this time, it was really helpful to add those holes ahead of time because it's definitely putting some drag on the needle and that would put me in danger of ripping my page, which I don't want to do. And then here, this is my down hole. And there, I just kind of went around. You could go straight across. There is no wrong way here.
also, while I'm standing here stitching this, if you guys have any other video ideas like this, let me know in the comments down below. I know I don't spend a lot of time in real time on my videos, mostly just to save everybody time. Because if I had those journal with me videos in real time, it would be like an hour and a half sometimes. They're so long because I spend so much time thinking and depending on what I'm doing. But if there is something specific that you would like to see in real time, let me know. Because I think this was a great idea and sometimes I forget that there are some things that some people would like to see. All right, I made it to the top of my pocket. And now I'm just going to, going to double knot that. I'm standing up at my desk and it's a regular size desk. And that's really, <laughs> I really need to get something to stand up that's a little higher. Just do my back some good. Okay, so that is a hand stitched pocket and I think that is so much fun. I love the look of it compared to a sewing machine and it's so much fun on the opposite side. So you can do this to anything, anything that you come up with and you want to stitch down by hand. I know in the Delight series, I stitched a leaf. Did I stitch it or did I glue it? I've done it before where I've stitched and you could absolutely stitch this on by hand. There's nothing keeping you back from that. I would again add a little bit of a tape runner or maybe a little touch of glue to just hold it in place. That way you're not fighting with it when you're trying to stitch. And then just stitch it on the same way. Maybe in an X pattern, maybe just in a zigzag pattern. Just making sure to avoid that piece of plastic there on the back. But the sky is the limit with hand stitching in your book. I think it's a lot of fun. I think the most important thing is just to remember to add your holes first. So you don't accidentally tear your paper in some way. Other than that, if you wanted to add some faux stitching, maybe you would use an ink pen. I am not an artist at all, so... In no way am I able to draw anything that looks like hand stitching. Plus, I just really enjoy the texture that adding things like this to the book does for the book itself. I love all the different textures. Yeah, I hope that you found this helpful and informative. My husband's here with dinner, so I'm going to go out and eat <laughs> with him. Just a reminder, there are a few more of these journals left in my shop. If it's something that you would be interested in, my Etsy link will be in the description box down below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!